Michael Clayton Akapo. He's also the father of many and a husband of Mrs. Ziki Quaisin Akapu, with three biological adults' children. He's a brother and a mentor for many. He believes and practices what he teaches. He believes in the totality of the Word of God. He is a philanthropist a motivational speaker, a prayer warrior, and dedicated to the things of God. Let us prepare and receive both the word of God and the ministry of a faithful servant, Reverend Minister Michael Quincy Akapu. Hallelujah. The floor is yours. Amen. We are glad Amen. to hear your voice. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. And God bless you all. God bless you. I'm very grateful to God for such an opportunity. And once again, we are gathered in His presence. And I'm happy for all of you. I always say that it is a great privilege to be invited to join such a great company of people, God's people. I'm very happy to be here, and I'm so, so honored to mount the podium tonight. God bless you so much for all the work you are doing. We are grateful to God for your lives. Hallelujah. And thank you very much, Madam MC. God bless you. Um, I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find a name. <laughs> yes. 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 Pastor Victory, God bless you so much. God bless you so much. Pastor Vinci, hey, Vinci, a champion. God bless you. God bless you so much. I love the hymns. I love the hymns that you let us sing. They are very powerful um, songs, and thank you very much for your selection. God bless you. And our young ones, Dana Kofi and Darren Kofi, God bless you so much. And um, Lady Agnes Namoko, God bless you. Eva Otu, God bless you as well. And thank you all very much. And I believe that you should keep up the good work. And um, this is how it begins. This is how it begins. And I know that God will take you far. Amen. And... Um, I want to thank you very much, our sister Namoko, for that powerful song. God bless you so much. All right. So tonight we are praising God and um, looking at the power of praise. Shall we pray shortly? Shall we pray shortly? Why should I feel? Discouraged Why should the shadows come Why should my heart Be lonely And long for her In and home Jesus is My portion my constant faith is desired Oh, you watch me. This is all the sparrow. And I know 
we shall continue to sing for the mere fact that you are God here we are trying to discuss the power of your praise you created us and you put melodies in us so that when we want to praise you whenever we want to praise you you can bring out those melodious voices to sing your praise Tonight, we just want to understand why we should praise and to glorify your name. The Bible says that you inhabit the praises of your people. Come and inhabit our praises tonight. I pray, O God, that we shall not live here the same as we came. Help all of us to understand why you created us and why we we'll live. We don't live for ourselves. We we'll live for you. We thank you tonight. Let somebody's heart be touched to sing your praise and to glorify your name. Thank you so much. And we we'll bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. One day, I was in church when I was much younger. These days, these days, I don't think we have not too much time for praise and worship. And it is as if we rush everything and then we close and go. But I remember when I was young, we sang praises. In one of our evening meetings, as we sang praises, the auditorium was so charged people began to fall and people people began to scream and such is the power of praise it loosens people it brings joy to the heart of people in fact people if people there, there was a time we were we, we we had closed from church one evening and those days it was difficult to come by vehicles in the night so we decided to walk. We walked from Adabraka all the way to Teshinungwa. And when we got to the station, we saw the queue there. We decided to start walking. Some people say when we get to Labadi, we, 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 we are likely to get public transport and continue from there. We got to Labadi, we didn't get, so we, we continued to walk. And while we walked, we sang praises. And... <laughs> in fact, the journey was like a two-minute journey, so about two to three hours. It was more like a two-minute journey because we sang praises, we worshipped, we glorified God. And that is what it is. When, when you are doing that, in fact, when you are really in the mood to worship and to praise God, you forget about your environment and all you know is to praise God. Hallelujah. I, I want you to make time, to make time, to praise God really, to praise God really. Funny enough, two weeks ago, I was discussing this same thing with um, a group of people at a Bible studies meeting in church, and I was talking about the fact that these days when we have to praise God, you know, praise is praise and worship is worship. You don't miss those ones with supplications and dedications and um, 
sons of, uh, you know, easy these days when you go to church and you you raise a song that seems to glorify God, many people are not charged enough to worship and to praise God. But when you sing a song that appeals to their emotions, then the voices are raised and the place is charged. These days we are so selfish that we sing songs that seem to glorify us rather than God. Mm. So our worshippers do not really know how to worship. I keep saying that when we go to church and you raise a song like, We praise thy name, O Lord. It seems so old and so archaic that people are not moved. Mm. And they don't sing it well. But when you raise a song like, then come and see the whole place is charged. And <laughs> it, it, it sounds very funny to me. And I, when I, whenever, so when I, wherever I go, and we are worshiping and we are praising God, when you sing such songs, I don't, I don't get involved because it's as if you came to glorify yourself. You came to present your case to God rather than to praise Him. Hallelujah. So uh, that is why I like the choice of uh, the, 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 the choices um, uh, Mrs. Achampo made, and I'm so grateful that you made those choices. Hallelujah. They are very appropriate, they are very special to the occasion, and thank you very much for making those choices. Praise is praise, worship is worship. It is not time now to come and uh, make requests and to make supplications. Hallelujah. But tonight, we are talking about the power of praise. The power of praise. What does praise do? What power that praise, does praise carry? Hallelujah. Amen. And um, praise actually came from an old French word praise praise and it means to value to price so whenever something has a high value and it is priced very high it is cherished and it is regarded very highly and the worth of that thing lies in its price so sales guys or people who are engaged in sales always have the psychology they play on buyers so the higher the price matches the quality and sometimes we are made to believe that when the price is high, then it means that the item or whatever you are going to buy is valuable or is of a much more higher quality. But you see, it is very true. That is supposed to be the case. If you value something, you price it very high, and you give, him, you give the thing a premium price. And that is what praise is about. So the word praise here, or praise comes from the old English word, praise ye. So, in Psalm 149, verse 5 to 6, the Bible says that, Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises in their mouth. Now, a high praise of God will be in your mouth when you value God, when you praise, you place a high price of, on God, and when God is worthy, and when God has a great reward for you. And you see, whatever you value, you praise. And praise always means that you acknowledge what the person is worth, or the price tag on the person, or the value on the person. So, when we come before God, it is not time to come and ask for things. It is not time to come and ask for protection. It is not time 
to come and plead our case before him. Praise is praise. You praise him for the value that you place on him. For the value that you place on him. Or the, 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 what he is worth. Hallelujah. What he is worth. Mm-hmm. What he is worth. Now, words that are often used as synonyms or empire with praise are bless, exalt, extol, glorify. I remember in those days the song that was sung, I extol thee by Mrs. Champon, for thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted at high above all gods. For thou, O Lord, at high above all gods, thou art exalted. Thou art exalted. Then he says, I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Now, when Phil Driscoll is playing this song with his saxophone, you will love it. You will love it. It emanates from the heart. Praise exalts, praises to exalt God, emanates from the heart. And when you sing it, and you are extolling God, and you are exalting Him, I tell you, it's a great feeling. It's a powerful feeling. So you magnify Him, and you praise Him. In, in the Hebrew, praise is called Tehillah. Tehillah. And in Greek, it's called Espanos. Espanos. Now, these words... Sing the glory of God. They shatter God. They lift up praises to God and say things that elevates God, that glorify Him, that makes Him big, and that that exudes His glory and His mighty powers. I love the scripture that says that Moses knew the ways of God, but the children of Israel knew the arts of God. Now, if you know the ways of God, you have to praise God irrespective of the situation. Irrespective of the situation you are in, if you knew the ways of God. Now, those who know only the acts of God will praise Him when something good happens to them. In bad situations, they cry. They say, why God? Why me? But you see, when you know the ways of God, you will know that bad situations even adds to the glory of God. They still bring us good things because they are meant always for good and not of, of evil when God is involved. Hallelujah. So brothers and sisters, praise is very important. That is why I always tend to say that you don't only praise God when things are going well for you. You praise Him even when things are bad because God is able to tend every to tend every situation in our favor. He's able to tend every situation in our favor. And very soon we shall see that. Now, for the child of God who knows his God, who knows the power of God, who knows what God can do, praise is a duty. Let me say it again. For the child of God, who knows what God can do, and knows the ways of God, and and knows the power of God, and knows what God is worth, praise is a duty. Praise is everywhere represented in the Bible as a duty, no less than a natural impulse and a delight. To fail in this duty is to withhold from God's glory that belongs to Him. In Psalm 50 verse 23, Psalm 50 verse 23, as one of our young ones read, Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. And to him that othereth, othereth his conversation aright will I shew the salvation of God. So whenever you offer praise, you glorify God. Whenever you offer praise, you glorify God. You exalt Him. 
you glorify God. In Romans chapter 1 verse 20, it is to shut one's eyes to the signs of his presence. Now, whenever you lack praises of your lips, the Bible makes us understand that you shut your eyes from the signs of his presence. Because even in the bad situations, God's presence is right in it. That is why David says, Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. So David understood the praise of God so much that he knew that even in the shadows of death, the Lord is with him. So you will not shut your eyes to the signs of his presence. You know that he is always with you. And in Isaiah 40 verse 26, the Bible makes us understand that to be forgetful of his presence is when you don't sing praises to God. <laughs> when you don't sing praises to God, you are forgetful of his mercies. You are forgetful of his mercies. You are forgetful of his mercies. Hallelujah. I was dedicating a child in church last Sunday and this thing just jumped to me. That sperm just goes into somebody's womb and then God decides to turn it into a fetus and gradually it forms a human being. And that is so amazing and awesome. The human mind cannot comprehend it. And when you carry that thing in your tummy, you don't know what happens. But you are expecting a full-blown human being in nine months. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that, isn't that surprising? Isn't that powerful? God deserves praise. God deserves praise. He deserves adoration. He deserves glory. Hallelujah. So whenever... And, and you see... We, we don't just wear white to go to church to praise God because God has given us a baby. We, we have to go and celebrate the wonder of that miracle. The wonder of that miracle. That is why in Deuteronomy 6 verse 12, the Bible says that we are unthankful for his kindness if we refuse to praise him. We are unthankful. We are unthankful. We are unthankful. That is why in Psalm 150 he says that, Praise ye the Lord. Praise him in the sanctuary. I like the, the I say, praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. According to his excellent greatness. For his mighty acts. Praise him with the harp and the psaltery. Praise him with cymbals. Praise him with sound instruments. Praise him. Praise him. So, so, <laughs> sometimes I become very emotional when I'm talking about praise. Praise of God is first of all an inward emotion, a gladness and a rejoicing of heart. Psalm 4 verse 7 and 33 verse 21. It is a music of the soul and spirit. It is a music of the soul and spirit. It is soothing. In fact, when you praise God, in fact, when you have allowed yourself to praise God adequately enough, it has an effect on your countenance. It has an effect on your inward part as well. So, you are in a meeting, a song is raised, personalize it, sing the song to God, glorify Him, think about His mercies, think about His glory, think about His greatness. Think about the value of God. Think about the price tag of God. And worship Him and praise Him. Hallelujah. Praise Him. Glorify His holy name. Hallelujah. Now, praise, praise is a language that no other language can adequately express. When, when you have praise inside you, it can only come out as words. So, whenever you lack enough vocabulary to express your heart's gratitude to God, what it only means is that you don't have enough praise in you. 
because praise is expressed through words. So anytime you don't have adequate words to express to God in praise, it means that you don't have enough praise in you because praise emanates from the inward part of you. So utterance is a natural and a strong emotion and the mouth instinctively strives to express the praises of the heart. Psalm 51 verse 15. Your mouth only expresses, expresses the praises of your heart. So, when we go to church and they raise a song, that's it. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Jesus, blessed Savior, is worthy to be praised. The song says that he's ready to be praised. And you cannot find words enough to praise God. Then it means that your heart is not showing enough gratitude. You don't have enough words to express it. There's no praise inside you. Hallelujah. There's no praise inside you. Amen. But when you understand who God is, His worthiness, His glory, His power, His authority. One of the things that amazes me, when you take time to go to the beach, and you sit there and watch the waves. In fact, I have traveled by sea before from Liberia, Liberia to Ghana. And when, when the ship sets off, when they take off, they go to high seas, they, they, they sail against the wind, against the tides. So they sail to high seas and then they take the direction to wherever they are heading to and then they allow the waves to push the sea, uh, to, to, to push the ship. But the amazing thing is that when you get to high seas, you don't see land. In fact, land disappears. All you see around you is water. It is like you are in the airplane and you are in the skies and you don't see the ground. All you see is cloud beneath you and you see the skies. It's so amazing. So what I'm saying is that, but even this water, Bible says that the world is made out of two thirds of water. Two thirds of the world space is covered by water. And if you look at this water, large and big enough, and it covers two thirds of the world space, and God has set its boundaries, and it does not overflow. You can understand. It does not overflow its boundaries. You can understand the power of God. When it gets to the boundary, it flows back. It's a mighty act of God that God needs praise and adoration for. And I also say that each time I go to sleep, I do not know where I go to. All I know is that I am back and I am awake. It's a mighty God, and he deserves praise, he deserves adoration. Think about it. I have slept a little before I woke up to preach, and I only set an alarm. And can you imagine, wherever I was, I didn't know. I cannot tell you where I was, but I woke up by the alarm. I woke up anyway, and God just called me back to come and preach. That is an amazing act of God. It's powerful. It's great. That is why the accounts have a proverb that if you don't know death, just watch sleep. Now sleep tells you that when you die, you don't know where you go. And it's an amazing thing. So sleep is actually equal to death. When you sleep, it's an amazing thing. You don't know where you go, but you wake up anyway. It is a mighty act of God, and that requires praise from you to God. And all of us must be able to praise God. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, the power of praise. The power of praise. Praise invites His presence. And our spirit is refreshed and renewed. God dwells close to us when we praise Him. And we are strengthened by His peace. Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. I think that praise removes anxiety and the fear of the unknown. Now, that is why I said that if you have enough praise in you, it will come out as words on your lips. And anyone who is capable of praising God, God enough does not, does not wallow in anxiety and fear. Because praise is a way of taking away anxiety and fear. It puts your heart at peace. It settles you down. And it makes you know. In fact, if you have spoken about the power and the amazing authority and, and the greatness of God, no condition on this earth should make you panic and make you fear. Because praise tells you that God is all powerful, he's all great, and he's, 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 he's an amazing God, and he can do everything and anything. Hallelujah. So praise removes anxiety, and it takes away fear of the unknown. If you are afraid of tomorrow, just praise God. If you are afraid of anything, just praise God. If your heart is not at rest, just praise God. And as you begin to praise God, and the greatness of God is right before you. In the power of God is right before you. And I can tell you that I can tell you that that is the truth that and you will you will know that God has to do everything. The other thing praise also lives it verse 5 to 6 says that why am I discouraged why is my heart so sad that is the song we sang I will put my hope in God I will praise him again my savior and my God now I am deeply, deeply discouraged but I will remember you hallelujah when you remember the power of God when you remember the worth of God, when you remember the mighty acts of God, you will never be discouraged in life. Your heart will never be sad. And you will put your hope in God. And you praise Him again and again and again. I believe that one of the greatest things we should praise God for is our salvation. One of the greatest things we should praise God for is our salvation. Because, yes. because I have seen many people that I was in school with. One day, in fact, when, when, when in, in the late 90s, when I got my first job, and I was working at the Tema Fishing Harbor, then I saw a gentleman who had, who, had, who had gone mad, excuse me, and I looked at his face closely, and lo and behold, that guy was my primary school mate, my classmate in primary school. In fact, we started primary school together to our class six, and this was my former classmate, and he's, he was now a madman when I met him those days, and I always saw him around. And he knew me. I knew him. I mentioned his name. And I was so sad. So one of the things that we should praise God for is our salvation. You know, when you are saved, it is a package. Every chain in your life is broken. You are removed from the power of darkness and brought into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. And when you are moved from another kingdom, into from one kingdom to another kingdom 
every chain that 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 entangles you every bondage is broken because you are in a different jurisdiction so whenever you have to praise god remember your salvation as well and it is one of the mighty 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 acts of god that within a twinkle of an eye after i have confessed jesus as my lord and personal savior i have been transitioned from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light praise god it's a mighty act the bible says that we have become the righteousness of god in christ what a mighty act and he has given us the rope of righteousness and we, we we are now in the kingdom of his dear son and we have become priests and priests Oh, shut up. We have become kings, priests, and queens. And the Bible says that <laughs> we are a holy nation, a royal priesthood. Praise God for that. Praise God for that. Hallelujah. There is no doubt we have a lot in our world today to be discouraged about. But Psalm 42 reminds us to both praise God. And remember what he has done in our lives when we are done, down. Whenever you are down, remember what God has done in your life. The world is looking for hope. As Jesus' followers, we know the only real reason for hope. That's why worship is so energizing. It takes your eyes off, off your troubles and puts them on Jesus whenever you praise God it takes your eyes off of your troubles and it makes all your troubles become <laughs> a little before you if you don't have the capacity to elevate God to exhort him to extol him your problems will still be giants and mountains before you but if you can elevate God, you can extol Him, you can exalt Him, you can magnify Him above all you will put your heart at rest. Hallelujah. Your heart will be at rest. Amen. Amen. I read an article from Rick Warren. I love that guy. And one of it says that praise reveals solutions you cannot see. Praise reveals solutions you can't see. We all have issues in our lives. We simply can't figure out. They are so overwhelming that we don't know how to deal with it. They tie us up in knots. Psalm 73 Verse 16 to 17 describes this kind of situation. I tried to understand all this, but it was too hard for me to see until I went to the temple of God. And he says that, Then I understood what will happen to them. The temple of God is a metaphor in this psalm for coming into the presence of God. It was through worshipping Worshipping God that the writer got his answer. When, when you get to a state when you can understand the way God does his things, you will always praise. Hmm. Then you will understand. Then you will understand what will happen to people who don't have God. So, praise reveals solutions you can't see. It reveals solutions you can't see. In fact, if you can see everything, then you must be God. Because God is the one who knows everything. So take note of that. Praise reveals solutions we can see. So, you may have come to the point when you have no idea of what to do next. But you see, God provides answers during time of praise. As you are thinking about what to do, just praise God. Then the Spirit of God drops an idea into your brain. You drop an idea by all means. That is what God can do during praise. The other thing he said was praise and leads God's protection. Praise and leads God's protection. 
When you praise God for an answer to your prayer before it happens, that's faith. And that's when God begins to fight for you. In Second Chronicles verse chapter twenty, Second Chronicles chapter twenty, we read about three enemy nations who ganged up on Israel. The only chance Israel had was for God to miraculously save them. So King Jehoshaphat organized an unusual battle. He put a choir in front of the army. So they marched into battle. The Bible says, as soon as the Israelites started praising God, confusion ensued and the enemy was defeated. The Lord wants to fight your battles too. So take time to praise in advance. Now, this is this doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense because logically it only makes sense after something good has happened to you then you come praising God and giving thanks. But in this situation you go ahead and give thanks and praise God before your miracle happens. And it's only a crazy man who does that. But the Bible calls this faith. When you praise God in faith, God turns your situation around. This is what King Jehoshaphat did. In fact, praise is a strategy for victory. Because even when the children of Israel were going to fight Jericho, that is what happened. God said, just let the choir lead. Let them sing praise. Let them blow the trumpet. Let them sing praise. Just sing and go around the city seven times. Once a day for seven days and the last day for seven times. Who does that? When you have to make your ammunition ready, when you have to prepare for battle, you are there singing praise. It does not make sense. But that is what praise does. Praise is a powerful weapon for battles. Hallelujah. Amen. That is faith. Try it. That is faith. When something bad is happening to you and you lift up your voice and begin to praise God, watch what happens. Just watch what happens. Hallelujah. So we will not forget, we will not forget Acts chapter 16, verse 26. When Paul and Silas were in prison. And in those days, there are prisons. There is an outer chamber, inner chamber, which we call the dungeon, and then you are put in shackles. So it is not a den, and then you have guards in front of the gate. You go through the gate, the outer chamber, inner chamber, and then you are in shackles. So you see the levels of bondage. But, you see, in that situation, you might feel stuck, like nothing has changed in your life for better, for the better. It sounds odd, but there's no better time for you to thank God than right now, when you are in that situation. You see, Paul did this in Acts chapter 16, while he was in prison with Silas. In the middle of the night, the two decided to have a praise session. As they praised God, the Bible says, the prison was shaken to its foundations. Who does that? All the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. That story is a miracle. But it's also a metaphor of what God does in our lives. When we praise Him, when you need to be set free, from an attitude, an addiction, or habit. Praise God. It will break the chains holding you. Hallelujah. It will break the chains holding you. Try it. Try it. Don't just cry for help whenever you are in a situation. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Whenever your heart is down and it seems as if all your friends are advancing and you are stuck, Praise God. Because, listen, 
you don't know what is ahead. The battle is not for the strong, nor the race for the swift. Life is a marathon. Just praise God. Praise Him in every situation. And I have always said, one of the greatest virtues of a Christian is, is contentment. When you are content, you can always praise God. Discontent people are never able to praise God. In fact, when you come to understand that life actually is like chasing the wind, like Solomon said, you have enough cause to praise God. You have enough reason to praise God. I always say that people who fought so hard to become president and they die, it is as if they have changed the wind. And truly that is what it is. They lived all their lives chasing. Some contested three, four times before they became president. And after that they die and go. So what did you achieve? And any time I remember that the great illustrious son of our land, Kofi Annan, is dead and gone. I ask myself, so in this life, what did we come to do? Brothers and sisters, it is, it is a more reason why you have to praise God because life actually doesn't make sense upon all our achievements. You, 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 you heap up titles upon yourself. You heap up property upon pro- property. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, all means nothing, and it is truly really nothing. That is why put anxiety aside, put everything aside, and find a place in your heart to praise God, because because praises will take you far, and it will take you to eternity. Praise God when you are when you are content with what you have, and when when you have a heart to praise God, when you have a heart to glorify, when you have a, a heart. To appreciate God for who He is and what He has done, you will understand that life is actually chasing the wind. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, another one is praise enlarges your perception of God. It enlarges your perception of God. In Psalm 69, verse 30, He says that I will praise the name of God with song and magnify Him with thanksgiving. When we look at something with a magnifying glass, it gets bigger. When God gets bigger, our problems get smaller. Either your problems will be big or God will be big. It's your choice. Hallelujah. That really is a choice. Amen. It's really a choice we must make. The other one is that praise helps you sense God's presence. It helps you sense God's presence. Psalm 140 verse 13. God is always present. Whether you sense it or not. Sometimes we don't feel his presence. But that's because we've moved away from him. He hasn't. Now on this point, I always say that you don't need to feel the presence of God. Because God is not a feeling. It is a knowing. The Bible says, those who know their God. Those who know their God. Now, so, you don't have to feel God. Most of the time, we become very emotional about God. But God is not a feeling. It is not emotion. God is a knowing. In fact, to be born again, you just know that you are born again. You don't have to feel that you are born again. Because nothing about you changes. Your face does not change. Your body does not change. You are still the same. It is not a feeling. It is a knowing. You sense that presence of God in your life just because you know that God is present. So when you don't feel God's presence, it's when you need to praise Him the most. It's easier to act your way into a feeling than feel your way into an action. In fact, Maturity is when you do what's right, whether we feel like it or not. The Bible says, surely the righteous will praise your name, and the upright will live 
in your presence. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? Amen. Yes. Okay, it's raining heavily here. So if there's a noise in the background, please pardon me. There is a heavy rain going on right now here in Ghana. So please, especially in my place, <laughs> Sakumono. So forgive me if uh, you hear some noise in the background. The rain is quite heavy. Hallelujah. So Amen. praise helps you sense God's presence. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now the last one. The last one. Praise. Praise helps you. Praise helps you to remember. Praise helps you to remember God's blessing. It helps you to remember God's blessing. Often when we are thinking about a big problem, it's all we can think about. It colors everything in our lives. That's why when you have a fight with your spouse, it tends to become everything you think about. Praise will correct the imbalance. It will remind you that not everything in your life is bad. In Psalm 105, the Bible describes this pattern. Thank God. Pray to Him by name. Tell everyone you meet what He has done. Sing Him songs. Belt out hymns. Translate His wonders into music. Remember the world of wonders has made, has made its miracles, and the verdict is rendered. Psalm 105, 1 and 5 from the Message Bible. When you have problems, you tend to focus on the negative. Praise helps you remember who God, who, who you are and who God is. Praise helps you to remember who you are and who God is. Hallelujah. So brothers and sisters, praise is a powerful tool. It has the power to liberate you from change. It has the power to set your heart at peace. It has the power to shape your vision. It has the power to remove the, your focus from the, the magnitude of the problems that you face and focuses your attention on the power and the ability of God. Remember the Bible says that with God all things are possible. In the world, many things are not possible. Many things are not possible. There are so many things that, is, that are not within our control. In fact, you cannot do anything about it. But with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. In fact, I have had very challenging situations. When, when I, I have no idea how I was going to get out of those situations. But some way, somehow, the thing gets solved. And I'm amazed at how it gets solved. It's always a surprise. And that is what makes me know that God is always with us. Always. Always with us. Because, listen, there are so many things that you don't have any idea about how to go about it. But God, but God, but God, but God. In fact, in our church, we are in a rented premises. And because we are um, a thriving church, we are a small group trying to grow, the finances is always a challenge. So the building project is a homongous task. But you see, I am amazed at what God does every time. And every time... God brings people to come and visit us, you know, um, um, from our headquarters and our missions team and from time to time. Anybody who comes around and comes to see what we are doing, they are so touched. And when they go, they go and talk for us and say that Pastor Mike needs help. Get some funds to help him. And I'm even surprised that as we sit here, they are helping us to to reach a certain stage and then they've also promised to come and roof for us 
and that is amazing because I've never gone to ask for funds. I've never gone to ask for support. But people, other pastors who come around and come and see, then they go and talk for me. I've never gone to see my general overseer to say that, Pastor Ransom, please help us. But some way, somehow, he himself comes to see the project and he's so surprised and, and he's willing to help. And I've never gone there to ask. And it amazes me how God works. All these people come around and never tell them anything. But by the grace of God, they go and they talk for me and they are, they are safe. They, they, in fact, they are talking for me. And that is what God does. In fact, the Bible, the Bible makes us understand that we should cast all our cares upon Him and that He cares for us. That is why we need to praise Him. The sleepless night must be over. The sleepless night, sleepless night must be over. Don't be sleepless. It must be over. Praise God. Praise Him in the sanctuary. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise, praise Him with the sultry and the half. Praise Him. And the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise Him. Praise Him at all times. Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him in the noon time. Praise Him in the evening. Praise Him in the night. Praise Him at all times. Sometimes you just don't feel like it. But praise God all the same. Praise God all the same. Praise God all the same. And always let us learn, all of us, let us learn to magnify the Lord. He said, be magnified. Oh Lord, you are highly exalted, and there is nothing you can do. Oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified, oh Lord, be magnified. When you magnify him, your problems become little. When you magnify him, your problems contrast, they become small. When you magnify him, he becomes bigger than what people say. He's bigger than what people say. In fact, it will not be people that will tell you, but you will know how big he is. You will know how big he is. Hallelujah. Amen. You will know how big our God is. I just want to encourage you. I just want to encourage you that there's no problem bigger than God. There's nothing he cannot solve. Whenever I look at that young man, Joseph, in Potiphar's house, the Bible says that he was lied upon and was taken to prison. And between the time that he interpreted the dream to the king's cup bearer and the time he was remembered, it was already two years. Can you imagine? Already two years. But even there, even there, in fact, if Joseph had, had prayed that God should take him out of trouble, then it means that it was, his miracle was not going to come. That is why even in that situation, you have to praise God because in that, God can still show himself strong on your behalf. Praise God every time. Praise him in every situation. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. That is the power of praise. You don't have to praise when everything is okay. Praise Him even in their own palatable situations. Praise Him all the same. Hallelujah. I want you to bow down your head with me. Bow down your head with me. There is an old song we used to sing. It says that, I will praise Him. While I've breath, I will praise Him all day long. I will praise Him as the sun goes down. Oh, what a marvelous God is my Lord. And He says, It's mighty at His works, it's mighty at His doings. 
He will never ever fail me. Oh, what a marvelous God. I will rejoice and be glad. I will rejoice and be glad. I will rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and be glad because he is a marvelous, marvelous, marvelous God. Just think of the things that he has done for you. Think about when you were in trouble. Think about when life seems hopeless. Think about that situation. Think about how God delivered you. And just begin to give him praise. Just begin to give him praise. When you least expected it, God showed up in a marvelous way. He can still show up. Just give him praise. I will praise you, Lord. With all my mind, I will praise you, Lord. With all my heart, I will praise you, Lord. With my strength, will I praise you. With my life, will I praise you, Lord. Praise Him with your life. Don't let anything stop you from praising Him. Because even that bad situation can be turned into a good situation. I just came to encourage you. Keep praising Him. Keep praising Him. Keep praising Him. And you'll be surprised that all the things that bothers you and worries you are actually not very important. They actually not. Life is more important than anything else. If you have ever contemplated suicide, it is not worth it. Because listen, dying doesn't solve your problem. Because the problem will still be there. Why do I say so? Believers don't die. <laughs> so you will never die. When you commit suicide, remember you will face your God. So dying is not a solution. Praising God is the solution. Hallelujah. Paul and Silas could have said that we are finished. But they glorified God. I remember one time in the Bible, the Bible says that Paul was lashed 40 minus 1, 39 lashes. But when he came out, he started praising God. He said, I have been found worthy of suffering for God, for the Lord. Be lashed for the sake of Jesus. Praise God. And he was rejoicing and jumping all over the place. And somebody said, this guy is mad. But you see, that is what it is. Praise is praise. Hallelujah. Praise is praise. Just begin to thank God and appreciate him. Just lift his name. Tell him how big he is. Tell, tell him how large he is. Tell him how glorified he is. Tell him how, tell him how worthy he is. Tell him how good he is. Tell him how merciful he is. Tell him how exalted he is. Tell him how... Just give him praise. Give him glory. Tell him something right now. Open your mouth and begin to tell him. Open your mouth and begin to praise him. Open your mouth and begin to magnify him. Open your mouth and glorify his holy name. Hallelujah. His God, his skin, is mighty, his marvelous. His